Okay, let's learn basic calculus notation. And here we have a calculus problem. And uh, the purpose of this video is to uh, just introduce some of the symbols and notation in calculus. It's really designed for someone who really maybe doesn't know any math at all. Maybe some of you are going to be taking calculus and just, you know, interested, or some of you are just like, you know, I heard about calculus. Maybe I want to learn a little bit about it. So really this uh, video is designed for everybody. You don't have to be, you know, some math uh, whiz or anything else to kind of understand what I'm talking about. But calculus is kind of this intriguing mathematics um, and it is uh, extremely powerful, and I'm, I don't want to minimize that we can just learn it one, two, three, but oftentimes uh, people get scared of mathematics because the symbols seem so strange, and it's like, wow, it's so mysterious, like, you know, I can never understand this. And the uh, kind of the point or the uh, my goal in this video is to kind of demystify some symbology in calculus to be like, oh, maybe that's not so bad. And maybe you know, might get motivated to want to learn a subject. I would say that would be great because calculus is truly a, uh, an amazing mathematics. It's, uh, you know, has solved so many huge problems. It's used everywhere. And I think uh, as a math teacher, you always hear you know, when am I ever going to use this? When am I ever going to ever use this? Well, if you just think of all the technology that you're surrounded with and all the, uh, your just modern day, you know, a bridge that you might drove, drive over, uh, uh, a building that you might see, all this engineering and technology, I mean, really calculus is at the center of all that. So I think um, a lot of people, if anything else, you know, from this particular video, you really truly have to appreciate the impact mathematics uh, has in your modern day life and probably nothing as is uh, as impactful as calculus. So we're going to talk about this uh, basic notation here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I, constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is of course i'll let you be the judge of that uh, statement if you're interested you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video but basically i offer uh, 100 plus different math courses i have all the main courses uh, for middle and high school math like pre-algebra algebra one geometry algebra two i'm going to be launching pre-calculus here uh, shortly and that is obviously the course you need to take before you take calculus um, so if you're interested in that, check back about a month from uh, when I'm posting this video and uh, my course sh uh, should be launched. But I also do a lot in the area of test preparation, things like uh, for those of you who are studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ALEX, ACCUPLACER, uh, CLEP exam, teacher certification, nursing entrance. There's a million different reasons why people study mathematics outside of a, a formal math course. So if you're studying for any particular exam like that, go to my site. Again, you can find the link in the description of this video and check out my course catalog. I should have that. If I don't, drop me a line in my contact form to help you out the best I can. I also work a lot with independent learners uh, like homeschoolers. So if that's your situation, I have a great homeschool learning program. And then obviously I help those of you who are just having a difficult time in your math class. But one thing you need to do if you are studying mathematics, that is take great math notes. So over decades of teaching mathematics, one thing is apparent to me. Those students who take great math notes will be successful in mathematics. And those of you that don't take math notes are like, yeah, I don't want to do that. Just like me back in the 1980s. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do that. And guess what? My grades uh, suffered <laughs> until I figured out that, you know what? Note taking is uh, an absolute requirement. The better your notes are, the better your grades are going to be. But if you are um, uh, in a particular math class and you don't have good math notes right now, uh, you need to start working on that. But I offer uh, detailed, comprehensive math notes so you have something to study from to include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. Find links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, so let's get into calculus. And, you know, it's funny because I uh, when you're, you know, there's different movies that I've watched through the years, and they'll have some math uh, you know, uh, there might be some mathematics going on, whether it's a code breaker or some sort of, you know, thing. And you'll see some calculus. And, you know, of course, as a math guy, I'm like, oh, wow, look at that. You know, it looks so 
advanced and just, uh, you know, crazy stuff. But this is what calculus looks like. This is a pretty basic kind of calculus problem. And let's discuss this notation, okay? All right, now this calculus, what I'm talking about, um, this would be something that you would take as kind of an introductory calculus course. All right, so yeah, I have a graph going on here, and now let's just talk about these symbols. So the first symbol that might come to mind is this whole little long thing right here. That's is a kind of very common calculus symbol, this guy right here. And that's referred to as an elongated S. All right, so that, like S, like this, uh, the letter S. Now, now, if we elongate that S, right, it's going to kind of look like that. So this is kind of what that is. And you can kind of think of this elongated S as part, or it's related to this word sum, okay, because that's basically what it means, all right? This means we want to find the sum. We want to do what? Well, the sum is what? Add up. We want to add some things up. And that's what this symbol basically is stating. Hey, we want to add some things up, all right? We want to find the sum of what? Well, that's our next thing right here, okay? Now this uh, 3x squared, this is an example of what we call a function in mathematics. And this is kind of the uh, kind of general symbolo symbology or notation for a function. And what is a function, right? So this is a specific function, 3x squared. But if I wanted just to write a generic function, I would just say, hey, I have some function. I would just write this symbol, okay? But what is a function? Well, a function is effectively a rule, okay? And it has an associated graph with it. So this function, 3x squared, okay, uh, for example, could be this uh, graph right here. Okay, this could be the graph of this particular function. So we'll just call this our function 3x squared. And uh, for those of you that might know some basic algebra, this is what we call a parabola. It's a U-shaped graph. And this is how we kind of uh, basically describe it. Okay, now, uh, all you need to know is that 3x squared graphically looks like this. And this is just some basic algebra. It's not that difficult to graph these things. So what do we have so far? Well, we want to add up, okay? We want to uh, find the sum. We want to add up some stuff that is um, somehow related to this particular function or this particular graph, right? So that's where we're at so far in our nice little al uh, calculus exploration. So the next question is, well, what do we want to add up? Okay, what are we trying to find the sum of? Well, that's where these little numbers right here are going to come into play. So we have 2 and 5. Well, these guys right here, 2 and 5, are going to be associated with this x-axis. Now, um, if you're not familiar with the basic x-y-axis, the way it works is this. This is 0 in the middle, and then this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5, and you kind of get the idea. So this way, it's the negative values, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, you get that. And then from right here on the y-axis, this is a positive 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It just goes on and on and on. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. So this is a basic x, y um, uh, plane, and we use this standard plane here, this x, y graph, to graph our functions. Okay? All right, so let's get back to uh, these guys right here, this 2 and 5. These are boundaries on the x-axis. So let's go to 2, okay, and let's go to 5. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So what we're... Um, let me move this over here because I'm going to have to draw or sketch here. So here's our function again. All right, so what we're trying to do is... In calculus, what is a very common um, uh, goal, okay, in calculus, basic calculus, we call integration. So integration just effectively kind of means to add up. Now, of course, I'm kind of simplifying or oversimplifying, and some of you out there are like, no, no, it means specifically this. That's the, that's at the point. I'm not trying to teach to, to you in a very technical way. I'm just trying to give you some... Uh, general feel for this. So integration is kind of add up. So what are we going to add up? Well, we're going to add up this 
um, this particular function. But what does that mean? Well, it, for us, we want to find uh, the area underneath this uh, uh, function's graph. So here, let me show you what that looks like. So from here, from 2 to 5, actually, let me draw this out a little bit more. Okay, so because this graph continues on and on and on. Okay, all right, so from 2 to 5, all right, in calculus, what we want to uh, oftentimes when you're doing this type of problem, what we're trying to do is find the area, okay, underneath the curve, underneath a particular function's graph, okay, and it's kind of bounded from here. It's going to go under the graph just like this, all right, so this is what we're talking about, like so. All right, so we're, this particular um, uh, integration problem, that's what this is called, okay? We want to add up from 2 to 5 underneath the uh, function's graph 3x squared. That's what we're trying to do here. All right? So this is kind of the main idea of this particular calculus problem. Now, this little dx is um, uh, related to another topic, uh, very, very uh, hugely important topic in calculus called the derivative. But for now, you just need to know that that's a, uh, a little notation that we write when we do this type of problem, okay? So that's all this means right here, all right? So we kind of not really focus in on it so much for the purposes of understanding this particular problem. Okay, so uh, what are we trying to do here? Well, we're, so far, we're, what we want to do is we want to um, find the sum, okay, or integrate. We want to add up um, underneath the curve between 2 and 5 of this function's graph, all right? That's basically it. If you're with me so far, then you are already doing outstanding. You're definitely showing uh, promise to take calculus, all right? So that's all this is so far. But let's go a step further. We're talking about adding up, all right? So you might be saying to yourself, well, add up what? Well, let me kind of explain to you what we're talking about. Okay, so let's go back to this uh, problem here. If I wanted to find the area underneath the this shape here, I could be like, hmm, you know what? I'm gonna give I'm gonna give myself an estimation. I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna make some rectangles, all right? Because I don't know how to do calculus. I don't know the procedure here, right? So um, I might just make myself some rough rectangles like this. And everyone knows how to find the area of a little rectangle. It's just the length times the width, right? So if this was 10 and my width was 2, the area of this little little strip here would just be 20, 20 units uh, squared, okay? So I could find uh, this um, area, and then I could find this area, and I could find this area, and let's put a little small one right there. I could find that area right there, okay? So if I add up, right, if I find the sum of this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy, all right, I'm going to have some basic idea of the area underneath this curve, All right? So this is kind of where this is going, but that's just a basic, uh, you know, we're still missing, like, look at all the gaps we have here. So that's, you know, that's a pretty good idea, but how could we make our answer more precise? Well, we could add up what? Well, we could add up smaller little strips, okay, things that we can kind of make a little bit more, uh, or actually a lot more precise, uh, kind of, you know, uh, kind of hug that graph in a more precise way, right? So now I'm still doing the same basic math. I'm still doing just length times width, but now I'm adding up. I'm finding the sum of a lot more skinnier little strips here, little rectangles, okay? that go between two and five. And I can use my little ruler and my graph paper to kind of, you know, really measure out little tiny little skinny guys here. And I measure up this way and I could, I could find a better, closer estimate of the area underneath that curve. Okay, that's what we're trying to do in calculus because uh, this shape here, we don't have a formula like the area of a square is obviously length times width. If I have a nice triangle, I can find the area, it's one half base times height, right? But this particular crazy shape right here, mm, there is no formula. I'm gonna have to use some calculus to figure that out. So 
And what, what calculus says is, hey, look, in this particular problem, we're going to go from 2 to 5, and we want to find the area underneath this particular graph, 3x squared. And what this means is add up, find the sum of all these little rectangles. Now, here's the deal. In calculus, to find the exact answer, our little rectangles have to be infinitely skinny. <laughs> I don't know if you can kind of grasp that, right? So if here is one kind of rectangle, if I make it smaller and smaller and skinnier and skinnier, as I uh, make my uh, rectangles uh, skinnier, all right, and if I can make them infinitely skinny, then I have the perfect, most, like precise, exact area underneath this curve between uh, 2 and 5, all right? And that is what calculus is really about. Now, obviously, you know, at this point, uh, the mechanics behind doing that is a little bit more involved for sure, all right? This is where you actually need to study calculus, but it's not that difficult. Believe me when I tell you it's not that difficult. There's plenty of people that you know, I would say are not like math's not their strongest subject who were able to learn calculus and do pretty well in the subject. So you can too, but there's a lot of, you know, uh, prerequisite work that you have to do, but that's effectively what we're trying to do. So in this calculus no notation, what we're seeing in this particular problem, this is a very common type of calculus problem, is add up the area underneath this curve, this function's curve between two and five, and we're gonna find the sum of all these little, infinitely little skinny uh, rectangles. That's basically it. Now, here's the good news. When you study calculus, all right, let me kind of erase all of this, you might be saying, oh, wow, you must, this thing must require a ton of different steps uh, to do, you know, like, you know, how, you know, would I have to be working on this problem for, you know, uh, an hour to get the answer? The, uh, and the answer to that question is no, okay? In calculus, we have nice little rules that you learn, okay, that we can do something with this little function, and then we'll add in these numbers, and like one, two, three, it's not that bad, you will get the precise area. So a big part of learning calculus is learning these little rules and procedures, et cetera, et cetera. But what I'm talking about here is just conceptually, you know, how we want to think about some of this basic notation in calculus. It's not that bad. I don't want you to be scared of it. So next time, you know, you're watching a movie or you see something on TV or, you know, and you see some crazy math, you know, look out for these symbols. And you'll be like, oh, yeah, that's what that means. And and that's, I think, the beginning of of uh, learning is, is, is to... You know, drop the anxiety level down by demystifying it a little bit, you know, as an introduction. Now, again, I'm not trying to uh, uh, minimize the commitment and, you know, the amount of information you need to learn to be successful in learning calculus, right? It is a, it is a pretty heavy-duty level mathematics course, right? There's no doubt about it, and it will challenge pretty much anyone who uh, takes it, okay? But... Um, you can handle it, all right? There's a lot of background work that you can build yourself up to, but you can handle it. But again, the main idea of this video is just to, you know, show you that, you know what, these symbols, these mathematical symbols have meaning and practical meaning, all right? All right, so let's just call, kind of call it quits at this point. Hopefully, you're like, you know, that's pretty interesting, you know, and uh, I'm going to walk away from this video knowing a lot more about calculus than I thought I ever would have imagined. So you even look at this problem now, and you'll say, hmm, yeah, you know what, that's not that bad. And if you do like a little Google search on calculus or just look at this notation, you'll, you know, I think you'll have a bet, much better feel for what the subject is about. And of course, I'm, you know, I'm leaving out a ton of other stuff, but what we talked about here is a huge part of calculus called integration. All right, so if you found this video interesting, if you liked it in some way, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time, 10 plus years um, doing videos. It's a great platform for someone like myself who's obsessed with teaching math in a clear and understandable way. And uh, if you want to check out my videos on my channel, they're organized from basic to advanced math. So I have tons of stuff all there for you. But if you want my best resources, uh, you know where to go. Just check out the links in the description of this video. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.